Hi, I'm Yuha and I'm a hockey player here at USC. I will be going through some fixed concepts and examples with you this semester. And remember, just like on the ice, there's no such thing as luck in physics. Just keep your head up and work hard. In this example, we'll explore how to properly use the Newton's second law in circular motion. So we have an airplane, probably a fighter jet, that flies loop a loop and uh, we would like to know what is the force acting on the pilot by the plane. So we are talking about the, uh, the normal force applied by the seat of the aircraft on the pilot. So first of all, let's look at the situation when we're at the bottom. So in that case, the uh, Gravity acts down, mg, and uh, then there is some kind of a normal force from the from the seat. Let's say it's uh, up in this case. And uh, what do we do next? So two important things when uh, one are solving circular motion. First, define positive direction, and this is important. And stick with it all the way through the solving process. Up. I'll show you shortly what it means. And uh, the second one, radial acceleration is always toward the center. So in this case when we're at the bottom, so what does Newton's second law say? The sum of forces is equal to, okay, let's define our positive direction to be up. So what is the sum of our forces in this horizontal or vertical direction? Of course, we have this n force from the aircraft and then gravity. These two equal the uh, vertical or the radial acceleration, which is a squared over r by magnitude. And uh, in this case, the n becomes just uh, mg plus mv squared over r, or m times g plus v squared over r. So we define the positive direction to be up. So, and that gives the sign of n to be positive and the sign of gravity to be negative. And here's the important part. A radial is always toward the center. So in this case, the uh, uh, A radial or the center direction is above. So this acceleration must be pointing up. Hence, we have a plus sign here that I didn't explicitly write down, but it's there. This becomes clear when we see what happens on the top. So this was in the bottom. What about on the top? We can still use the same free body diagram, doesn't matter. As long as we stick to our positive direction and make into, take into account or make sure that the acceleration is always towards the center. So what is the sum of our forces? Again, this it's uh, n, and because n is up, and uh, gravity is down, and now when the vertical acceler or the radial acceleration 
is always towards the center, right here. In this case, it's pointing in the negative direction. So we must have a negative sign here. Like this. And now when we solve for n, we get mg minus mv squared over r or m times g minus v squared over r. And let's look at these results. When the aircraft is at the bottom, the seat not only has to support the weight of the, uh, the pilot mg, but it also has to keep the aircraft on the circular path. So hence we have this additional force or additional acceleration v squared over r. And the n is in fact the apparent weight of this uh, person because that's what he feels from the seat. So these are the g-forces that people or pilots are subjected to when we're, they're do, doing this kind of maneuvers. On the other hand, on the top, we see that the uh, uh, force from the seat uh, reduces because it's on the, on the circular path. It affects opposite to the, uh, the gravity. So basically this pilot is being held on the seat by the seat belts that run over his shoulders and uh, gravity to some extent uh, alleviates this, uh, uh, this apparent weight, in other words. And uh, you can imagine if, if uh, the aircraft goes fast enough, the v2 over r, v squared over r, comes equal to uh, acceleration of the gravity, so this becomes zero. So that is in fact the, uh, the condition of uh, weightlessness that you might have experienced in a theme park ride, for example, while going upside down. And uh, if the uh, aircraft would go even faster than that, so then the uh, sign of this expression would become negative, which means that the uh, aircraft would be uh, pushing the pilot from the bottom again. But uh, these are just uh, nice operations. What is really important is to stick with these two steps while solving circular motion problems. First, always define the positive direction and stick with it. And uh, adjust the sign of the acceleration as necessary as we saw in this case. Of course, we already also had it here. But in this case, the acceleration was in the same direction as the positive motion, or the positive direction, so we didn't explicitly have to write it down. But here, we had to use the negative sign because it was against the positive direction.